If you're newer to pull or putting together routines, this tutorial is for you. We're gonna walk through a few different steps of some relatively simple pull moves that you can put together that require very little strength or flexibility, which can be done by all levels of pullers, okay? So maybe you have a pull at home, maybe you just started taking classes, but you wanna be able to chain together a few things. This will be a nice little combo that you can put together. Maybe you have some additional moves or tricks that you've learned that you can add into this and you can make it an even longer routine, okay? So just real quick to touch on pole dancing in general, if you're newer to it, um, common question is, can I do it? Okay, um, I'm too old, um, I'm out of shape, I'm not flexible, I'm not strong. Pull is for everyone, okay? We all come from different places, large, small, tall, short, whatever, background in movement, not background in movement. One of the things I love about pole is that it is for all shapes and sizes, okay? And we all have to start somewhere. So if you're coming into this and you have your doubts, the only thing that you need to have to learn how to pole dance is the desire to try something new and desire to learn, okay? Anybody can do it, okay? So we're gonna go through a few moves here. With these, um, I'll break them down, but keep in mind, this little combo is meant to give you ideas. Don't feel like you need to do it exactly the way that I do it. Our bodies are all different, which means I might do some of the mo these moves and you might look at it and be like, oh, okay, I like the way that looks. You might try it and because your body is different than mine, it might not look the same on your body. Maybe you like that and it's a totally different look. Maybe you don't like that. And so you take that move out or you do your own variation, okay? So there are all kinds of variations to every move, okay? So for some reason, as you're working through this combo, you come up with another variation that you like better, do it. Okay, so make sure you've warmed up beforehand to work through this routine, okay? Making sure you're rolling out your wrists, your shoulders, your hips, all of your joints, okay? I just always like to make sure everything is kind of moving around beforehand. Okay, whatever kind of warm-up routine you like to do, everyone has their own secret sauce for their body. Um, what to wear. I'm wearing leggings and socks. It's a little chilly here today. You can be wearing shorts. You can be wearing pants. You can be barefoot wearing socks. You can be wearing heels. This combo works great with heels. I just didn't bring mine today. I forgot it would have been a good idea. Okay, so this combo 100% works in heels. And if you have heels, I encourage you to rock them. Okay, I do have this pole on static. You can do this entire combo on spinning pole, but if you are newer to pole, sometimes the instability feeling that you get from spinning pole makes moves a little bit more challenging in the beginning, okay? But whatever you're most comfortable with, okay? So I would encourage you if your pole is spin and static and you're not feeling totally comfortable with some of the moves or if you're wearing heels, um, you might feel more comfortable on static, but try both, see what works best for you, okay? So we're gonna start with A, Put some music on, okay? I have to be careful on the music that I post because if you know copyright, things like that. So the music that you usually see me post with my combos is not the music I was actually dancing to, okay? Cool thing about that though is that the music you like might not be the same as the music I like, okay? So to start, when you start working this combo, put on some music you like. It might be fast, it might be slow, it might be whatever it is, but put on music that encourages you or inspires you, I should say, to move, whatever that is. So we're gonna start on our routine. This is going to be a roundabout into a pirouette, okay? So for this movement to start, when you're waiting for that time in your music, have some kind of movement, okay? It can be tiny. It might even be as slow as just your fingers are moving. It might be just a leg moving. It might be your shoulders moving, but just think of like, you know, you don't wanna be waiting for that beat to drop and be like, oh, I gotta go. Okay, so just have like some movement, hip circles if you're comfortable with them, body waves if you're comfortable with them, whatever. Just think of having some small movement like as wind up, okay? So you're waiting for your music. We're going to go into a roundabout to a pirouette. So for this one, the roundabout also sometimes called around the world. I'm gonna start with my inside hand. So inside hand, whichever hand's closest to the pole in a true grip, my thumb is gonna be wrapped, okay? Thumb is wrapped around, so it's like a handshake grip on the pole, somewhere around shoulder, chest, face height, okay? So not super low, somewhere right about here, grabbing comfortably. My inside foot is gonna plant close to the pole. Not so close that you're gonna stub your toes, but the farther away you are with your feet on this one, it'll make it feel a little bit more unsteady and unstable, okay? So you do wanna be relatively close. I'm going to lean away with my torso. The second hand, which is in this case my outside hand, you can either leave it swinging or you can grab onto the pole as well. 
Okay, that depends on your comfort level, that depends on the style you want, okay? So I'm not gonna tell you what to do with this hand because that's gonna come down to whatever you feel comfortable. Maybe you start to do this roundabout spin and it feels a little, ooh, or you feel like your grip might slip, grab on with that second hand, okay? So this hand can stay off, it can go on either way. So if I'm starting here with my inside foot, my outside foot, I wanna think of drawing a big circle around my pole and leaning with my hips. So I'm gonna lean with my bootay as I draw a big circle to come all the way around, okay? So basically one foot went all the way around, almost kissed the other foot, and then the feet traded places, okay? In the beginning, if this move is newer to you, you're getting comfortable with some of these moves, you might do a smaller roundabout or you just might wanna do a smaller roundabout, okay? So you might go all the way around, you might go halfway around, whichever. Do lead with your booty, okay? Rule of thumb, in pull, when in doubt, stick your butt out. Okay, so in this one, as you do the roundabout, you can have your knees bent, you can have your knees straight, but the more you lean away with your butt, the more momentum you're gonna start to develop with this one, okay? So this is our roundabout, inside foot plant, lean away, big circle to the other side, okay? As soon as I come up on the other side, my inside hand, I'm going to adjust and I'm gonna go into a pirouette. Little disclaimer here, there are a bazillion variations of pirouettes, okay? And if this one gets a little bit confusing for you, do a little turn in place, switch your hands however you want to. Like I said, this little choreography sequence is meant to give you ideas, you could follow it step by step, or freestyle a little bit here and there and do whatever works for you, okay? So I've just come out of my roundabout. My outside foot is placed. My inside hand was where it started. I'm gonna slide my inside hand up so it's just a little bit above my head. I'm gonna unlock my thumb, which means I'm gonna go from it being wrapped around the pole to right next to my fingers. I'm going to look under my armpit, push my top hand until the pole is touching my wrist, and then picture you're wearing a magnetic uh, wristband or watch, and it has to be touching the pole the whole time on your wrist, not your hand. I'm gonna go under my armpit, and now that hand re-grabs, okay? Once again, this outside hand, I didn't tell you what to do with it. It can help the turn. It can freestyle on its own, whichever you prefer, okay? So let's go from our roundabout into that pirouette. I'm gonna step inside foot close to the pole, inside hand, roughly face level. Outside foot draws a big circle around, come up, slide my hand up, unlock my thumb, go to my wrist, look under my armpit, think of smelling your armpit, go under that arm and step. Okay, and you'll find as you start to get comfortable with this move, the momentum from the roundabout will kind of throw you into that pirouette. If you are to use this outside hand, like I said, you can put it on the pole however you like. I find, especially if I'm wearing heels, okay, and I need a little extra steadiness, that outside hand, I'll reach across with my fingers down, okay, and you can grab with the thumb or not grab with the thumb, but it just gives you a little bit of stability and push yourself around. Okay, so that's kind of optional on the outside hand, but I find sometimes in the beginning, there's enough things already going on with that pirouette to try and think about both hands is a lot. So don't overthink this outside hand, focus on the inside hand, outside hand will fall in line, wherever that is. Okay, so we've got our roundabout, we've got our pirouette. We're gonna start a second roundabout, but we're gonna stop it halfway through, like we changed our mind, okay, and turned it into a little sassy move here. So we just came out of our pirouette. We're gonna start another pirouette. So our outside foot steps towards the pole. Same thing, that thumb unlocks, push to the wrist. This time I am going to reach across with that bottom hand because I'm gonna use it to pull my butt to the pole halfway through. So I'm gonna reach across with my fingers down, go under my armpit, rest my shoulder to the pole right here. Now from here, I'm going to now, I can let go with that bottom hand, look towards my armpit of my top shoulder, slide this foot over and angle your hips, okay? See, my hip bones are going, Mer. that gives a little more sass, a little more curve to it. Then, that foot that was left behind, I'm gonna rest my butt against the pole, slide this foot so my knees just gently kiss, make a circle with that foot, and then rest your butt against the pole, okay? So my legs are gonna end up in a V. If you're wearing heels, you're already kind of up on your tiptoes. If you're not wearing heels, Try not to be flat-footed, okay? And this actually is the same if you are in heels. Ideally, you wanna think of trying to roll up on the toe box or the toe of the heel, even if it's only a tiny bit. Try not to be flat-foot. It just gives a little more of a sexy vibe, okay? 
I find when I'm wearing socks like these, they're keeping my toes warm, but they do make it a little bit more slippery, which means I go up my tiptoes. Sometimes I feel like I slide out a little bit. Struggle is real. Okay. So I'm in a slight V. Okay. How big of a V is up to you? It's not meant to be a big split or anything like that. Also, my feet are in front of the pole a bit. Like I want to have my feet far enough in front of me that I'm leaning back and like the pole is holding me up. If suddenly someone took this pole away, I'd fall on my butt. Okay. So you don't want your feet to be stacked right underneath you. You want to have them out in front of you for this next move. Okay. So let's recap. We have our roundabout into our pirouette. Start another pirouette. Shoulder to the pole. Rest your butt. One leg opens. Hips turn. Knees kiss. Other leg opens. Rest your butt to the pole. Now, from here, this free hand, this is optional. You can, with this hand, reach back, thumb down, and it's called a cup grip, which means my fingers are all next to each other. Cup the pole right here. That'll just give you a little more stability. So especially if you're wearing heels and you're like, oh, I feel a little bit unsteady. This hand right here just keeps you in place. Once again, this is optional. This hand can be down with the other hand or it can stay here, okay? Whichever way works. So we're right here. This top hand, we're going to come down. You can feel yourself if you want to. We're going to go into a double leg admiration or it can be single leg if one hand is holding onto the pole. Eyes are gonna look up as long as you can. Make eye contact with your audience. At the last second, drop your head. Hands now work their way up. When your elbows get up to your side, hair flip, make eye contact again. Slowly bring it up. Hand goes up and grabs the pole, okay? And how I grab the pole and you know how much you feel yourself in this, depending on your comfort level, whether you feel comfortable with it, not comfortable with it, do you, okay? This hand as it comes up, whether it comes up here or here, I'm leaning my head slightly and then taking my hand to the same side of the pole as my head and then grabbing, okay? Um, I'm grabbing with my palm away. If you reach up on the same side and grab, it's you'll come out in kind of a funky position. Once again, not wrong, just a variation, okay? But it will be kind of a smoother exit for this combo. If you think of lean your head away a little bit, hand comes to this side to work your way out, okay? So, Recapping once again, roundabout, pirouette, half pirouette, one leg circles, other leg circles, lean your butt against the pole, eye contact coming down, head drops, head stays down, hand slide up, head flip, one hand slides up, grabs the pole. Now from here, you're gonna use your booty. At the same time, you're gonna pull down with the shoulder. So just engaging. Think about engaging your lats as you engage this butt cheek to push away, okay? An option, you can also use this hand behind your back to give you a little bit of a push, okay? So if you need to add extra steps in there, feel free to do so. Once again, this is just one option, one variation, okay? Because we're going to come out of this and take it to our first spin. So it was right here. I can reach with my hand behind my back, or you can step and then step out, however you prefer to exit from this, okay? So we've just come out of our double leg admiration. We're going to take it to our first spin, and we're going to spin it down to the ground, okay? So for this one, this is a double back knee hook spin, and we're going to take it all the way to the floor. Um, with this, little side note, I find a lot of people um, fall in one of two categories on spins initially. Some people are front spinners, some people are back spinners, okay? So there are some people that spinning backwards totally makes sense in their head. There are other people spinning backwards, mind blown, spinning frontwards, ah, totally makes sense, okay? So maybe this spin comes naturally to you, maybe it doesn't. It doesn't mean it won't down the road, it just might take a little bit more practice, okay? And on this, if you're still developing your strength with pole, this spin is falling with style. Okay, this is not about you holding on and holding your weight up and be able to do a pull up. This is about you just holding on and sliding it down. So I'm going to show you the whole spin and then I'm going to show you a little variation if you're maybe still getting comfortable with spins. A nice way to kind of ease your way into this one. Okay, because as much as we call it a spin, it doesn't have to be a spin in the beginning as we just start to get comfortable with it. Okay, so we're in our double leg admiration here. Hand came up. We're going to step out. My outside hand and my outside foot 
are going to come together as I turn to face the pole. Okay, so I'm gonna end up facing the pole here. From here, this hand is grabbing meh, face, chest level, somewhere right in here, okay? Feet relatively close to the pole. Like I'm a little farther away maybe than, you know, would be ideal. Um, but at the same time, like you wouldn't want to be any farther away than this. Think of like maybe a foot's width, but better is actually if you're closer. Once again, everyone's body's different. So what distance feels best for you might be different for someone else. Okay. So I'm here facing the pole. I'm going to lean my booty away from the pole and then whichever arm is down. Okay. Which in this case is my left arm. I'm going to crunch my butt towards that arm. Like I'm trying to get my hip to touch my elbow. It's not actually gonna touch, but just think of crunching your booty that direction. This spin does require or need some pivoting on the balls of your feet, okay? So if you are wearing heels, you know, you're gonna kind of pivot on your toes. If you're barefoot or in socks, you're gonna kind of pivot on the ball of your foot, okay? What tends to happen sometimes when people are new to this, they don't wanna let themselves pivot, okay? So just kind of give yourself a couple little warm up pivots initially and be like, okay, I gotta let my feet unhinge just a little bit, okay? So one hand is high, one hand is about chest level, booty leans away, crunch your butt towards that bottom arm. And then from here, I'm going to bend the knees or keep them straight, falling into the pole. Okay. And the pole sometimes like depending on how fast you go into this, depending on length of your body, depending on whether you have skin or leggings, the pole's going to end up somewhere either mid thigh. Sometimes it ends up behind your knees. I find like if I'm, if I'm bare skin wearing shorts, I'll tend to kind of hook behind my knees. If I'm wearing leggings, I just tend to let it kind of slide up my leg a little bit. Okay. So where exactly it hits when you land is going to be different for everyone. And you're going to kind of land on a side booty cheek here. Okay. So let's look at just that spin again. I'm facing the pole. One hand is high, one hand is roughly chest-ish level, feet are relatively close to the pole, up on the balls of the feet, lean your booty away. You can start into this with straight legs or bent knees, crunch your butt towards your bottom arm. Think about whichever way you're crunching. Think your goal is to get that butt cheek to rest on the pole. That's what you're doing. You're literally gonna bounce your booty off the pole and then slide it all the way down, okay? So I'm gonna lean my butt to that side, falling backwards and down. Okay, and the more aggressive you are going into the spin, the more revolutions you'll get. Okay, so if in the beginning you're kind of, you know, cautious going into it, you might make a half revolution. Um, as you start to be a little more aggressive, as you step into it and really throw your booty into it, you'll start to get a little bit more momentum. Okay, so real quick, let's look at if this spin feels sometimes like we watch it and we're like, oh, that totally makes sense. And then we get there and we're like, you want me to do what? If this is feeling unstable, insecure, your body just doesn't want to cooperate with this whole spinning backwards thing. To start, don't focus on spinning. Just think of sliding down, okay? So if that feels kind of scary to do the spin or you're, like I said, your body and brain are just not on the same page at the moment, you're gonna start the same way. You're gonna crunch your butt and then I want you to rest your butt and just slide it down, okay? So start with that, okay? So if the spin part, like I said, is not feeling totally comfortable, just do a few slide downs. Cause one of the things I find when we start and pull, a big part of it is just starting to trust our bodies, to trust our grip, to trust our strength. You have more strength quite often than you realize that you have. It's just, you never put your body to that test. Okay. And like I said, the goal with this is not for your hands to hold on so tight that you don't move. The goal is to actually slide down. Okay. So you don't need to have the strength to hold yourself in place. You just want to have the strength to slow your descent and that's it. Okay. Um, on that note of slowing your descent, if you do have bare skin here on the pole, you'll be able to slow your descent more. Okay. So just keep in mind, if you feel like the grip strength is like, Oh, I'm you know really struggling there, or it's still a work in progress, do put shorts on and that will give you a little bit more skin there. Of course, as always go with what you're most comfortable with. Okay. You can wear whatever you want to pull in. Um, there are some moves that will definitely be easier the more skin you have, but bottom line is about you being comfortable, okay? So do you remember how we started this combo? I don't know about you. Sometimes I get a ways into a combo and I'm like, wait, where did I start? Okay, so we're taking it in that spin down to the floor. Let's go from the very beginning, take it to the floor, and let's see what's going to happen from there because we are almost done with this little combo, okay? So we had our little movement at the beginning. We're going to take it into our roundabout, into our pirouette, into a Hobbesy pirouette, step, step, 
double leg admiration, hair flip, re-grab, turn to face the pole, spinning it all the way down. From here, when we land, your top hand is going to come off the pole first and drop to the pole or to, to the floor, this thing down here. Your top leg is going to straighten. Okay. And then from here, there's going to be a combination of movements through your body. And once again, there are going to be all kinds of variations getting into this. I do find for floor stuff, the more clothes I have on, the smoother it is. If I am wearing shorts, I tend to stick on the floor. We like the stick for on the pole. Sometimes the stick on the floor is not always the uh, exact thing that we wanted. Okay. So I'm going to really think about engaging my glutes to push my hips forward as my second hand comes down to the floor and I'm going to roll it down to my stomach. Okay. So we started here. Top hand comes down, top leg straightens, and then hips and hand. Think about trying to bring your hips to the ground first and then your chest. Okay. How, um, how much time or back bend is between those two spots hitting is going to vary person to person. Okay. There's no right or wrong. And even varying person to person by flexibility, it's going to vary person to person by taste too. Okay. Also like size of boobs, things like that. There's so many other variables. Okay. So once again, remember this movement is going to look a little different on everyone. Okay. So we landed our spin here. Top hand comes down, top leg straightens, engage that booty, hips roll, hips down, chest down. Now from here, you can keep a leg bent, two legs bent. That's just a stylized thing. Do whatever you want. If you want both legs straight, both legs bent, one leg bent. Personally, I tend to go with one leg bent, but that's personal preference. You're going to put your hands, think of close to your boobs, okay? And try not to have your elbows out to the side. You don't want to be super wide here. Think of trying to keep your elbows close to your side, okay? Think of playing your cards close. From here, I'm going to push my booty up. I'm leaving my face down on the floor. And here you can do a couple of these if you want to add a little extra sass or depending on your music. I'm coming up with my hips here, making a little circle and taking them down. Okay, so you can add a couple of little, little hip circles. Okay, and it doesn't have to be a big motion. Once again, depending on your flexibility, it's going to look different with one person than it does with another. So don't look at this and be like, oh, but my back isn't that flexy. It's not about your back being flexy. It's about you being you. Okay, celebrate it. You're awesome. Okay, so we're here. Booty comes up. You can add a couple of these if you want to. And then when you're ready, you're going to think of pressing back into a child's pose, but like the sexiest child's pose that you've ever done. You're going to leave your head on the ground. Think of, you know, cleaning the floor with your hair or your cheek, however you want to look at it. I'm going to push with my hands, pushing my butt back and really sticking my booty out. Okay. So I'm sticking my butt out. I'm leaving my chest on the ground as long as I can. See, now I'm to my forearms. I went from my hands to my forearms. When I can't go any farther back, still keeping my booty in the air, then my booty starts to come down to my ankles. Here's a brief child's pose. Then I'm going to hollow my chest. Think about hollowing your chest, rounding, rounding your back as you slide your hands. Head's going to go to one side. Head circle. You can add as many of these as you want. Okay? And my knees open up. So initially when I come back to the child's pose, my knees might be together, they might be open, depending on what you want. When we come all the way back, I tend to like to then open my knees, add a little extra sass. Now you see it, now you don't. This is once again personal preference. Do you, okay? So we came out here. You can add some you know, movement in here, whatever it is that you want. Now, you have a choice. If you like floor work, you can continue with floor work. If you have some other moves that you wanna throw in here, if you have the gift of twerk, this is a great chance to work it, okay? Otherwise, if you want to take it back up to the pole, maybe to continue with some other moves or repeat this combo again, we're going to stand it up. So from here, my hand that is closest to the pole is going to grab the pole. You can get up with whichever knee you want to. I always start with my left knee because my right knee has had a knee reconstruction years ago. So it's my dead knee. So I baby it all the time. Okay. So I always start with my left. You pick whichever one you want. If you do have a bad knee, I would encourage you to get up with the good knee first, okay? So I am pulling with this arm, but it's minimal, okay? My legs are gonna do most of the work. So I'm gonna keep holding on with that hand. One leg, my butt's gonna stay low. One leg's gonna come here, butt is still low, and put 
my foot down as close to myself as I can. Like, I, I don't want it here. I want to, you know, and I just don't want it way out here. So think of like trying to get that leg to where it's vertical. From here, I'm going to shift my booty. Think of sitting on your heel. Okay. This hand can help or not help. It can sit here and just kind of have a sassy, don't care kind of look. It can grab onto the pole if you want to. Once again, personal preference. Okay. It might help depending on your comfort with this move to now slide this hand up or you can keep it where it is. Once again, both work. So I'm gonna keep my booty over on this left heel, transfer my weight to that side, so I can then, my second knee, I bring my knees together for a moment, and then open that one, okay? Once again, if you have the gift of twerk, this is a good place to put it, okay? Now, from here to stand it up, we're going to do the bend and snap. Your head is gonna drop as your booty comes up. I would highly recommend, and of course there are variations to this, having one leg bent and one leg straight, okay? It just gives it an extra little sass, okay? So my head's gonna go down, my butt's gonna go up, one leg is bent. To me, I prefer to bend my uh, right knee and have my left leg straight, but that can go either way. Hair flip, hand slides up, chest comes up, and then walk it out. Okay, let's look at that up one more time. Okay, let's look at it from a little bit different angle. So you can see what it looks like straight on to kind of see what's happening with those knees. Okay, so it was right here. My knees might be together, they might not be together. One hand is up. I'm gonna bring one knee out, shift my weight over, sitting on my heel. Other knee comes in, kiss and open. Head goes down, butt goes up. I'm bending my inside knee, leaving my outside knee straight. And see, there is a little space between my feet, and that is important. If your feet are too close together, you're gonna have a really hard time bending one leg and keeping the other leg straight, because they're just gonna be so close together, okay? So head goes down, butt goes up, hand can come up your leg if you want it to, hair flip, come up with your chest and out. Okay, so that concludes our little combo. Let's do a real quick run through, okay? So if at this point, if you are watching this tutorial with your pole nearby, if you want to run through it and I will shout out each of the steps and you can try them all out while watching or you can just watch and try and absorb it a little bit more if need be, okay? So we start at the very beginning. You've already picked out your music, whatever that is. It's fast, it's slow, it's the music that makes you wanna move. We're gonna start with our roundabout. Big step around into a pirouette. Step out of that pirouette, start a second pirouette, but stop halfway. One leg opens, hips turn, knees kiss, hips open. Rest the booty on the pole, double or single leg admiration. Head goes down, hand comes up, head comes up. Hand goes up, grab a hold of the pole. Feet and hands come together, lean towards your bottom hand, Spinning it down to the floor. Coming out, top hand comes to the floor first. Top leg straightens, hand and hips. Hips, and then chest. Couple of booty circles here. When you're ready to come out, leave your boobs on the ground as long as you can. Back to forearms, hollow your chest round, 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 round. Head. Flip or neck circle, whichever you want. Standing it up. Grab a hold of the pole. One leg, sit your booty on that heel. Second leg, head down, booty up, hair flip, and out. Walk it off. Going to whatever move you want next. All right, so that is a little beginner pole combo. That being said, it doesn't have to be just beginner. Maybe you are intermediate advanced with tricks, but you don't work on a lot of flow. Just a simple little combination of things that you can do to put together. A couple of words of advice that I would give to those of you that are newer to pole or just newer to movement in general. Start with slow music, okay? It's generally much harder to um, make things look smooth and fluid with the faster music and we tend to get, just get sloppy and start to miss things So if you are newer to this or still sorting things out or finding your movement start with slower music, okay? Um, and then from there you can put on whatever you want But like if you're first learning the moves like stick with slower and then if you're like, okay, this is feeling good 
go to whatever feels best for you. Okay. If you're a nine inch nails fan, uh, you know, I don't know which of hardcore, hard metal, whatever. Okay. On that point, if you're enjoying these combos, if you're looking to learn new tricks, if you're looking to develop your pole dancing, I have an online program that I would love to tell you more about. If you are interested, it is a month to month membership program that gives you weekly tutorials on pole, off the pole training for those times when you might not have a pole available as well as flexibility training. You can read more about it, information on my website where we go through Combos like this, we also build into intermediate and advanced tricks. There's a beginner, intermediate, and an advanced level for my membership program. So if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you're looking to go farther with your pole training, I would welcome you to check out the link that you're going to find at the end of this video or below in the comments and come read more about my program and join. I would love to have you be a part of my EV Fit Polars members online program and to be a part of your pole journey. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Best of luck to you in your pole training. Go have fun with it.